Hey there, friends. Welcome back to my vlog series on my master's project. This week I was working through the interview questions for the answer to the, to the first part of the question that I'm seeking to answer with my project. So just a quick review, that question, that question is, um, how do I think and play like a traditional musician? And just in working through what I've worked through this past week um, with these with with these questions and just the clarifying that's happened as I've had to put these down on paper um, I think it's important for me to just note that I have a partial answer already to my question in that not all traditional musicians think like <laughs> so there there are a lot of them that think very differently about what traditional music actually is. And so what I'm seeking to clarify is what's understood as traditional music in the general psyche of traditional musicians. So what I'm going to do now is just go through like the groupings of the questions that I have. I'm not going to talk through each question individually. Well, actually, I can't really talk through each question individually because I wrote all these questions out and then after I wrote them out I realized that I've been asking my questions incorrectly which is all part of this process but the question that I'd been asking was what are the assumptions that traditional musicians bring to the music when they play and I don't know if assumptions is the right word and this might sound picky but I don't think assumptions is the right word. What I'm looking for when I'm talking about thinking and playing like a musician are, um, the heart of that is I'm looking for what are, the, what are the parameters, like the principles or rules, if there are either of those, right? What are those things? And then where am I free to just play? And some of this question, I mean, you know, this is personal because I've started playing in this style of trying to really understand it and I've heard the messages that to my ears sound conflicting on one hand I've heard people say you know do what you want pull it in include it in the tradition and then I've heard other people come back and say oh that doesn't sound very traditional so I just start out by asking I mean I'm going to ask people what the instrument or instruments are that they play and then how they were initially trained. Not just about style, it's also, I'm curious to know if people were trained orally to my ear first, or if they were trained with the dots in front of them, because I believe that has a difference in how people process and play music as well. I know and then the next set of questions is, is directed at people, uh, their process of learning that second style, and then confronting not confronting, that's not the right word. This is where I do think maybe assumptions or subconscious information would fit in this question. Um, I'm curious where, where learning that second style has made people have to work through what their musical assumptions were from learning the first style uh, and how their thinking about music has changed. The goal of these questions is to flush out what has become subconscious and just included into how a musician plays because I do believe a lot of these parameters that people have in their you know in their minds and in their ears about what sounds Scottish um, and is Scottish or not it just becomes so ingrained that it does become subconscious and so I'm trying to <laughs> understand that then then. The next set of questions has to do with the fact there's not just one style of Scottish music, right? There's the conservative number is six different regional styles, but I think the number I've heard the most is eight. And then there's some people who say there's even more than eight. So there are, there are a lot of styles within Scottish music that are distinct and uh, there are enough similarities that they do all sound Scottish that to people's ears. The last couple lines of questioning that I have for traditional musicians, uh, the first is 
contemporary versus historical music. And in this case, when I use the word contemporary, I'm talking about music by people who are still alive. Um, does the way that a traditional musician approaches tunes by someone who's still alive, I differ from the way they approach music by someone who's already passed on. Um, or, you know, even music that they have no idea who wrote it. Personally think that it would, but I really don't know. The last facet that I'm really interested to hear people's thoughts on is melody and accompaniment. How do, how do traditional musicians think about melody? And how do they deal with it? How do they promote the melody? Where does accompaniment come in? Some of the classes, oh, I've listened to accompaniment to Scottish tunes down through time. And it's so interesting because the tunes don't change, but the accompaniment to them changes very much. I know this is just anecdotal, but the one memory that really stands out in my mind is the class that I was sitting in where there was a tune that was being shared and we were looking at the tune historically and it and there was like a ragtime accompaniment to this tune. It's like the tune hadn't changed, but because of the time period it was being played in, it was, I mean, it was, it was turned into a rag which is just fascinating. Well, that comes back to well, what is, what about the music is traditional? Is the melody all that matters? The last question that I have is, are there questions or ideas that I should be thinking about that I'm not? If you as a watcher have any ideas that you'd care to share, feel free to reach out to me on any of the social platforms if we're connected. Otherwise, I will leave an email link in the notes down below and feel free to, to shoot me an email via that. This week is going to be full of two things now. Now that I have my interview questions, I will be starting to sit down and chat with people. And then I'm also going to just start working through tune books one by one and just start evaluating the melodies, learning the melodies, playing them, finding what I'm looking for is finding the similarities in the, in the melodic patterns to, and trying to figure out what about those patterns makes it sound distinctly Scottish. So that starts this next week and I'll give you a report on that on Monday. Thanks for listening to me think this week and we'll catch you next Monday.